So now what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we can apply the EMTP trapezoidal rule uh, for solving a simple circuit problem and then I'll follow up with a more extended example. So this is basically the from homework number one, the, the RC circuit. And as you recall, we had a 10,000 volt source. We had the switch closed initially and what that would do is charge that capacitor up to 10,000 volts. And then the switch would open and then the trap charge and the capacitor would discharge and eventually the resistance in the circuit would dissipate that charge. So the time constant in this case uh, was 100 microseconds. All right, So we need to make sure that we choose a time step associated with this. Um, probably um, first attempt at this would be to take that time constant and divide by 10. So basically that time constant is the amount of time it would take for the voltage to drop to 37% of its original value. And so you could think of we've got going to have 10 um, segments um, in our integration process of going from time equals zero up to that particular time step. If I choose delta t 10 to the minus fifth, which which I, we're going to do, do in this particular problem. So since this is an old exam problem, all I'm basically asking is just to calculate the first couple steps so I can verify you guys know how to apply the approach. And what you're asked to do is given that you have the initial voltage at time zero, then calculate values for VC at um, 10 to the minus fifth and then at 2 times 10 to the minus fifth. So those would be two successive time steps. All right. So we're running at a, a, a time step that's one-tenth of the time constant. What I would do once the switch is open, I basically redraw the circuit and I insert in here the equivalent circuit models that we talked about in the, in the theory section. So then if I have a resistance, I just simply replace it by a resistor value. Um, go ahead and I will go ahead and label the nodes. And so I've got just simply a node number one with respect to the ground point. You can think about this as node zero. So node zero is just going to be the ground point. And then for the capacitor, then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting in an equivalent element where I have an equivalent resistance of delta T over 2C. I have the history current term I10 it evaluated T minus delta T. And then this total current is going to be the branch current. So the branch current at time T is going to be the voltage divided by this resistance plus this history term. So once I've made the substitution, I can go ahead and I can write a Kirchhoff current law relationship for node number one. Current's going out. So I'll have V1 divided by delta T over 2C. That's this current. I'll have plus one I10, the history term, which is this current. I'll have the current going through the resistor, which is V1 over R. All this sums to zero. And then I just go ahead and equate the coefficients on V1. So it's 2C over delta T plus 1 over R. And then on the right-hand side, I've got the history term minus I10. Note there is no uh, current term at time T because there's no forcing function on this particular circuit because I've switched it out. So that doesn't show up in this particular case. So to start this process out, what we start off by doing is we start off by calculating what I10, this history current, is going to be at time t minus delta t. Um, we basically going to have this time step of 10 to the minus fifth. I've got the value of c. I've got the value of r. And know what we need to do in this case in order to get this history term is we need to know what this branch current was at I t minus delta t, all right? So in this particular case, um, once this switch is open, if I've got 10,000 volts across that capacitor, then right after that switch opens, and I'm going to have that voltage, that same voltage across the resistor, and what I'm going to get is I'm going to get 100 amps 
flowing through that resistor. And so in this particular case, this is going to be the uh, value right here for IR. Uh, with no source in the circuit, then the current that's actually flowing from through that capacitor from 1 to 0, if I have the orientation down, that's going to be minus IR, which in this case is going to be minus 100 amps. All right. So again, the reason it's minus is the orientation for my current going through the capacitor is down. All right. So I have, I have an initial value of branch current of minus 100 amps. Then what you can do is for this particular time step, you evaluate the history term, I10. You need that at time 0. So this is the actual branch current minus that value at time 0, minus 2C divided by delta T over V1 at time 0. All right. And then what you get is you get a history component of minus 1,900 amps. As far as the physical meaning for it, it doesn't really have a physical meaning in this case. It's just simply that we use for the numerical calculation. So then once you have the history term, then I can calculate V1. V1 uh, delta T, um, basically from using this formula. Uh, we're not messing around with matrices in the case. I'm just solving for one um, voltage in this situation. So anyway, V1 at time delta T for the next update is, is minus the history term at time 0 divided by uh, 2C times delta T plus 1 over R. So you can see that this is kind of the form of V is equal to um, I divided by an admittance. And this is going to be equal to 1900 divided by this term in the denominator, which is going to give us 9048. So anyway, this is the first update. So basically what we see is we're starting from 10,000 volts. And for the next time step, we're getting an update for the voltage. You can actually see the discharging effect where the voltage is starting to drop. Then we go ahead and we get an update for the branch current at time delta T as well. Um, this is going to be the history component plus this current voltage. And this is going to give us a current of minus 90.4 amps. And so as the voltage drops down, then the current drops as well, right? So we start off with the minus 100 amps, and the, and the current's going to be decaying as well. For the next iteration, at time t equal to 2 delta t, we just go through the same process again. So now what we want, we calculate the history. This time it's at time delta t. Um, this is going to be minus... I10 at delta T, which is the branch current, uh, the minus the value of the branch current at time delta T, uh, minus 2C over delta T times V1 at time delta T. This is going to give us minus 1719.2 amps. And then I plug this back into the equation for voltage, and this is going to give us a voltage of 8187 volts. So again, you see that this what's happening in this case is that we start off with 10,000, and then the voltage is just decaying with time, which is what we expect. And if you wanted to calculate the branch current, I mean, you can do the branch current, but I didn't really ask that in this particular case. And so if you were going to keep doing this, then basically what you would have is you'd have a complete simulation, and at some point you'd have an end time that you want to achieve and then once you hit that end time then you would stop. It's never going to hit exactly zero in this case. It's exponentially going to be dying out. All right. So what I'll do in the next video is I'll go through a more detailed calculation because this is pretty simplistic here. It's kind of hard to do these larger problems by hand. I mean maybe you can do a couple variables but then the problem you run into with a couple variables is you have to invert a two by two matrix. And so this is where we jump to MATLAB usually when we're solving these, these larger problems then.